Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at Solace OS. But before we get started, I want to remind you, please like and subscribe to my channel. I would appreciate it. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. Also, it enters you into the contest for the Asus ZenBook 14 giveaway that we're doing on August 31st, 2021. We are presently at Solace's website. Solace is an operating system that is very different. It runs the Budgie desktop. It's their flagship. Now, if you have a computer with lower specs, they recommend that you run the Mate experience. According to their website, Solus is an operating system that is designed for home computing. So we're gonna take a look at that. So let's close out of Firefox. And this is the main screen you get when you boot into Solus OX. Right off the bat, I'm gonna try to find out how I can make everything down here a little bigger. Budgie desktop settings. Let's go in here and see if we can change the size. And this is the Budgie desktop. In the Budgie desktop settings, you get style. You got your widgets, your icons, cursors, notification position, dark theme. You can always flip that off and go to a bright theme. And animations. Desktop. Desktop icons. If you want them, they're there. You got the live USB that I'm running right now, the trash, and then install the OS. If you don't want desktop icons, you just flip that switch and they're gone. Active mounts. You can leave those on when you're in the system. If you plug in a USB, it'll automatically show you. USB or external hard drive will automatically populate on the desktop. Home directory, trash, click policy. It's under single click policy. I'm going to go ahead and double click. I like double clicking to open things. Icon size is normal. It obviously won't let me change that. And then the number of vertical desktops is four. Fonts. You can change these for each thing you want. Window titles up here, if you wanted to change the size of those, you just click in over here, scale it up. I want to go to 13. I'm going to select it, and it made it bigger. You've got monospace interface, text scaling. Okay, well, I would rather use the text scaling than do these one at a time. So let me just go ahead and bump that up. And that's a little bigger, so we'll go with that. Next, we're going to go to Raven. You want to set which side of the screen Raven will open. If set to automatic, Raven will open where its parent panel is. Now, if you're not familiar with what Raven is, it's a RSS feed. So if you've got news sources and things like that you want to get information from, you can plug that into Raven, and then your news will show up wherever you allow it to show up. Allow raising volume above 100%. I've got that to off. Enable display of week numbers in calendar. If you want to, you can set fourth week of the year, fifth week of the year. Show calendar widget. Show sound output widget. Show microphone input widget. Show media playback control widget. And show power strip. Windows. You can come over here and you can attach model dialogs to the windows. Button layout. You can have that on right or left. What that basically means is when you open up Firefox, or any window for that matter, if you notice the buttons are over here on the right, you can actually switch them to the left. It switched on this window, and now it's switched in the Firefox window. So we're gonna go ahead and put those back to the right. Disable nightlight mode when windows are full screen. Pause notification when windows are full screen. Automatic tiling is enabled. Enable window focus, change on mouse, enter, and leave. You can switch that on, and when your mouse comes in, the different focus will go on that window. Disable unredirections of windows. Show all windows in a tab switcher. And then your bottom panel. On your bottom panel, we've got the budgie menu. We've got the icon taskbar. We've got system tray, notification, status indicator, user indicator clock, and the raven trigger. You can add applets here if you want to. You just click on that and you can pick out through all these applets where you wanted to add them and put them on the taskbar. Let's close out of that. Let's go to settings. Position is on the bottom. You can switch this to the top, left, right. There we go. We switch it to the left. Let's go ahead and we can put it back down on the bottom. Size of it. All right. Here we go. This is what I want to do. Let's make that bigger. I'll run it up to about there. That'll work for me automatically hide we can go ahead and set that to automatically hide or intelligent hide on automatic if you open up something like firefox go full screen the bar is gone drop your cursor down and it pops back up you've got shadow adds a decorative drop shadow ideal for opaque panels stylized regions 
Add a hint to the panel so that each of the panel's three main areas may be themed differently, and then dock mode. When in dock mode, the panel will use the minimal amount of space possible, freeing up valuable screen estate. So if we turn that on, it comes to a dock right here. And instead of the regular file, you click on that, and there's all your files. Or you can create a new panel, and then what you have in the auto start. I'm going to go ahead and put it back in bar mode, close that, and we're going to take a peek what's actually on the taskbar. You've got install Solus, you've got your files, Firefox, GNOME MPV, that's your media player, and then Rhythmbox. Let's go ahead and open up the file system, and it's got the same one you're going to see across most of GNOME. It's just files, and if the folders are too small for you, just click on that drop down menu, run them up just a little bit. I'm going to make them a little bigger because I'm hard to see in. And we can go over here to preferences and we can get about files and it's 40.2. You can go to their website if you want to. You can also go over here and close that out. You can do some changes. You can show hidden files, show a sidebar. If you don't like the sidebar over there, you can just close that out and then you're just going to be dealt with the folders. Preferences. Add information to be displayed beneath files and folder names. More information will appear when zooming closer. First, second, third, you can Put what kind of information you want size type modified detail type you can pretty much customize it to the way you like other than moving the, moving the files around these are locked into place let's go ahead and close that out and then you've got your ethernet your sound your battery volume power time let's go over and open this up first thing you're going to see is it's going to list all of the apps that are on here let's go to accessories which gives you files and a text editor Graphics, which is an image viewer and LibreOffice Draw. Internet, which is Firefox, HexChat, and then Thunderbird as an email client. Office, you've got the full LibreOffice suite and calendar. Other, you've got onboard settings, print settings, and regular settings. Let's go ahead and take a peek at all the settings. You've got network, Bluetooth, background. Let's see what kind of backgrounds they let us change to out of the box. I'm just going to go with something like a railroad. There we go. Awesome. It's a good looking background. Then you got your notifications. You can set do not disturb. You can have lock screen notifications, which are on. Then there's applications. If you've got applications you do not want to receive notifications from, you can click those on and off here. Then you've got search. You can search in files, calculator, calendar, password, and keys. Applications. Notifications are turned on with the integration, and these are each one of those applications. Privacy. Location services is turned off. If you want to turn it on, all you got to do is come over here, flip it. What will happen is, is if there is an application or software that requires location services, you will be prompted if you want them to use it or not. So let's go back. Online accounts. You can come in here and set up your Google, Nextcloud, Facebook, Microsoft, Flickr, Foursquare, Microsoft Exchange, Last FM. You can log into all these accounts and they will integrate into your apps on your machine. Sharing. Computer name. You can name it whatever you want. Right now in a live environment, it is Solus or Solus. I'm going to go with Solus. Sound. You can adjust your sound. Right now, the system volume is at about 50%. I can run it up to 100% if I'd like to. System sounds. You can change the volume level of your system sounds. Then you can set up your output devices. Analog output device, whether it be speakers, whether it be a uh, headset, and then your input device, microphone, whether it's built into a laptop or it's a third-party microphone that you have plugged in through a USB. Alert sound, you can have a bark, a drip, glass shattering, or sonar. Power, this right here will tell, tell you how much power you have left in your battery. Power saving, you can go to a blank screen never, or you can set that up to shut off after two or three minutes or ten minutes, however you want to do it. And then have an automatic suspend, where it will suspend the system when it hasn't been used that long. And then show battery percentage by the battery down here on the icon. If you turn that on, it tells you you've got 86% of battery. So let's shut that back off. Displays, this will tell you what kind of displays you're running. Mouse and touchpad. You can adjust your mouse speed here if I want it to go a little faster or if I want it to go a little slower. So I'm going to set it midway, then turn natural scrolling on. That's when you scroll, you're going to have the natural roll back, go up. You know what I'm talking about. 
and then the primary button if you're a left-handed person and your primary button is right then you can click that and that'll make that your primary button keyboard settings printers removable media colors VB V box monitor that's what I'm using right now because I'm in virtual box but that's your base settings right there so let's close out of that let's open this back up sound and video you've got gnome MPV out of the box you've got rhythm box music player system settings applications background date and time we just went through those system tools budgie desktop settings which we've already looked at G parted partition editor universal access and utilities which is archive manager calculator disks disk usage analyzer document viewer help password and keys screenshot system monitor and terminal so I'm gonna go ahead and take a peek at system monitor and see what we're using in resources scroll this over here let's see where we're at I have a whopping two CPUs assigned to the system at rest it's using anywhere between five and ten percent of that CPU you can see the spike here when I went to move the window it kind of run that CPU up a little bit but I'm testing this to see how it would operate on lower end machines at present we're using 1.2 gigabytes of the four gigabytes I have assigned to the system which is pretty good I have some KDE desktops that run at 800 and I have some GNOME desktops that run at 1.8 so this is pretty good for the budgie desktop next thing I want to look is see what HTOP says we're doing HTOP let's try top top says we have 2900 megabytes of RAM in a buffer cache we are actually using 758 megabytes and 194 are free so that's showing us even better stats on top than what the system monitor is showing us which is pretty impressive so let's close that let's look at their software center okay the software center is up so we've got desktop software and theming gaming on solace multimedia graphics internet software programming languages office software security software and system software see if it's showing any updates it does say we have available updates these updates are mandatory and will be selected automatically let's see what they are okay so those are mostly system updates and there's a few of them installed it'll show you what you have installed it'll show third party what you have on here Android Studio you can install Bitwig Studio Impass so these are third-party apps that you can download right here in the software center let's look at settings automatically check for updates enable checking for updates on metered connections update frequency the type of updates you wish to be notified about and allow fetching of remote media Solace uses as stable and unstable repositories but they do give you the option to add third party repositories I think after you install it that'll be an option that is added but in a live mode it is not there it is a very beautiful operating system I think somebody coming over from Windows or Mac would feel very comfortable here there's your notifications right here I've just clicked on the bell you no you've got your applets and then you've got notifications and there is your calendar you can play some music from right here you can access your calendar from right here then you've got your battery then you've got volume then you got your power button well that pretty much sums it up for solace os tell me what you think below shoot me a comment i appreciate y'all watching today don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be entered into the asus zenbook 14 giveaway that we're doing on august 31st 2021 I thank you for watching the video, and I will see you in the next video.